Hello and welcome to the Programming for a Fundamental Investor tutorial series. If programming or fundamental investing sounds daunting to you, don't run off just yet. Everything here is going to be starting from scratch, you know, including the fundamental investing part and even where do we get data to make our decisions, all that kind of stuff. And just as a quick note, this is all for educational use. I am not responsible for any financial decisions you make, even if you use this tutorial to help you make them. So a uh, little bit of history on the use of computers um, for investing. You know, this is really nothing new, uh, though the technical analysis, high frequency trading, you know, algo trading definitely dominates the field when it comes to using programming and computers to aid them. And there's really just gobs of books and other media dedicated towards you know, this use. So I thought it would be actually kind of interesting to make a series dedicated towards the use of programming for fundamental investing and fundamental investors. The purpose of the computer here is going to be to help you um, in the discovery process of the companies that might make good fundamental investments. I also plan to cover multiple of the specific strategies for different types of fundamental investing. So, you know, what, what a growth investor might want to use a computer for versus what a value investor might want to use programming for, etc. Um, so like with algo trading, high frequency trading, the computer's use is mostly because a human simply can't either do the math quick enough or actually execute the trades quick enough or the combination of those. So here, even though like the pace is slower, the stack of eligible companies is still just monumental, right? So what we want to do is actually use the computers to aid us in the initial research and, and digging around for companies simply to help us locate all of the eligible candidates. Because, you know, even for someone trying to keep up with, let's say, just the quarterly earnings for the companies and just the S&P 500, you know, this is a pretty daunting task, and that's ignoring everything else required for a fundamental investor. So some background on me and what I do. I founded the website Centdex.com, which performs sentiment analysis on company speculation. So for all of the news and information online about companies, I've got a program that reads and analyzes all of that in real time. So, well, that's like, you know, quite a bit deeper than what I want to achieve here in this series. I do know firsthand that computers are just plain awesome and really, really useful if you, if you know how to use them. And also, I think that they can be used to enhance more forms of investing than just technical analysis. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of the major firms and maybe even smaller investors are using it, but there's just such a small amount of information online as far as using programming for this. But I thought, you know, putting out a series would definitely be something really, really helpful for the investing community. So it's really technical investing seems to get like all that attention, right? It's that sex appeal of it or something. Um, so anyway, if you have no programming experience at all, that's fine. You can still start these tutorials um, completely from scratch without knowing anything. Keeping up and understanding like the programming aspect might be difficult for you, but you can just straight up copy everything. If you are interested in actually learning what's happening for, you know, for real, uh, Python is really a pretty simple programming language and isn't too difficult to understand or use. You should be able to also just kind of read what, you know, like what I'm typing out. It should just kind of make some logical sense, right? Um, anyway, but yeah, we'll be using Python. And the reason Python's a good choice, in my opinion, is that it's not limited by large numbers. So many of the programming languages, even some of the most popular ones today, are still plagued by this max integer value of 2.147 billion. Obviously, many companies have metrics and dollar values that exceed that number. So a language that can work with numbers greater than this is a necessity. Um, also, my channel contains tons of programming videos as well, specifically for Python. Uh, some other languages, but mostly uh, this is all dedicated to Python. And I don't ever cover anything in my tutorials that either I, I don't explain in that tutorial at the time or that I don't already have just a dedicated tutorial video on it. So if you're lost, confused, whatever, feel free to leave a comment, send me a message, send me an email. I'm, I'm, I'm here to help. I love this stuff. And so I'm always real happy to talk about it. So uh, don't be shy. Uh, lastly, I was trying to figure out how I was going to maybe organize these videos in the series. I, I think that the best way to do it is just to have like one big fundamental investing series um, and then all the various types and how you might program within it. 
So uh, what you can do is you could skip, you know, to specifically what you're looking for, but you might be skipping over a lot of um, kind of like the baseline of, of the like the programming that we're going to be using. So most of our stuff's going to be um, either making use of some data sets that I have or from visiting, um, at least within my plans, is, is mostly going to be from pulling data off Yahoo. So you might miss some of the tutorial on how to do that. So if you're, if you're um, experienced with programming, you can probably skip. If you're not, then I do suggest that you kind of go in order anyways, even if you're not too concerned about these other techniques. Um, it still would make sense for you to follow along. So anyway, if all of this sounds interesting to you, then we should definitely begin. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is, assuming uh, that we're, first of all, we are starting from scratch, so we're going to assume that some of you guys don't actually have Python installed. If you do have Python installed, then you can just go ahead and continue on to the next video. If you don't have Python installed, then here's how uh, you're going to need to install it. First, you're going to go to your browser, and you're going to have to visit python.org. So just hop over there. Once you get on site, what you're going to want to do is go to the download section. And what we want is actually Python 2.7. Don't download Python 3, even if you think, oh, it's a newer version, it's better. Um, no, what we want is Python 2.7. So depending on what kind of operating system you're on, you know, if you're on Linux, you're probably going to be pulling out uh, the tarball. I'm on Windows right now, so I'm going to use the Windows installer, but obviously there's Mac OS and all that. So then, uh, you know, download whichever one you have, and then just install it. At least the Windows installer is quite simple. You just literally install it. And whenever that's done, you should be able to go to your start bar or whatever you have, type in Python, and you should have both a command line and something called IDLE, or idle. And idle is what we're going to be using to program in. When you first pull it up, it looks like this. To get to a blank page or, you know, like, kind of like a notepad version, what you're going to want to do is go to File, New Window, and that'll bring up something that looks more like this. And this is what we're going to be programming in, so that's how you would get there. And obviously you can go and save it. Um, and just as a quick note, when you do go to save it, um, it's always going to default as like all files, right? And so actually you're going to want to, at the end of you know, your file name, you're going to want to end with .py every time you save it. Otherwise it's not going to save it as a Python file. Just as a uh, quick aside, that can get kind of annoying. So anyways, once you've got it installed and once you've found your way to this uh, empty screen, you'll be ready to continue on in the next video.